move on then to talk a little bit about how we help your sons and daughters problem solve. One is that if they're having academic issues, they seek help from faculty members first and foremost here in the classroom. We ask them to use the office hours of the faculty members. But we have a wonderful cadre of academic advisors. I enjoy working with them. They're top notch, led by Jody herself. And so uh, uh, check with the academic advisors. They have all the answers about the academic program, what they ought to and ought not to take, what sequences they ought to take in their classes and et cetera. And as mandatory, all first year students must take the first year seminar. And so our honors program has its own specially tailored first year seminar. Uh, and so you'll meet some of the instructors this afternoon. I am looking forward to my 25 or 30 students in my first year class. I so look forward to each semester to uh, teaching one of those classes. I meet students in my class from all walks of life. And it's such fun to get to know and learn about the students as well as to teach them about their career paths throughout the institution for the next four years. So I look forward to that as my colleagues I'm sure will be looking forward to that as well. Also, if students are having personal issues, we expect that they would check again with the academic advisors who can point them exactly to where they ought to go. If they're having uh, stressful issues, uh, trauma, uh, this is a really tough time for many of us. Uh, there's uh, racial unrest in our country and there's also uh, the global pandemic, COVID-19. And so it has brought a lot of stress in terms of social distancing, the, uh, not being able to meet with their friends, having to wear masks, the whole nine yards. There's a lot going on in our country right now. And so there's a lot of stress for our, our students, particularly they're coming to a new institution, a new college, a new environment, new people having all these rules and regulations that can add added stress. So we want to make sure that they know where to go to get uh, to talk about that stress. And, and for some who are maybe traveling away from home, whether it's another country or whether it's from another state or maybe upstate New York for that matter, that could add some stress as well. So the counseling center is available uh, to help students work through that, stre uh, that stress. And so you'll hear from them a little bit more later in the pre presentation. We have a lot of smart students, but some students still need some additional accommodation. So our Student Disability Services Office uh, is available. Make sure that you register for if your sons or daughters have either a, a learning disability or physical disability. You want to make sure that they have the appropriate accommodation to help them to be successful at the institution. And of course, how are you going to pay for this college? How are you going to manage that scholarship? How are you going to be able to do work study? How are you going to be able to uh, manage that Pell Grant? And, and all the other wonderful benefits that you will get as being an R student, make sure that you work closely with the financial aid office and the financial aid uh, counselor to discuss all those issues. Also, we want to make sure that you help your son or daughter to problem solve, but don't solve the problem for them. You're teaching them how to solve. You're teaching them because you yourself are learning about all these resources. So you're teaching them how to be able to find these resources to be able to help them to solve some problems. Encourage them to utilize all the services on campus. They've already paid for these services so they don't have to pay any additional funds uh, out of their pockets to pay for any additional services on campus because they're already paid for. So why not utilize all these services? And so, for example, if they're living in our residence hall, we have about 425 students who can live on campus. Then we help them work through living with a, a new person in the residence hall, a roommate, how to work through, work through roommate conflict. And we have RAs and a residence like coordinating the hall to help to create that living learning environment. Research continues to show that students who live and learn in the same environment, students who are around other students who are doing the same type of thing, who are aiming for the same things in life, they're the ones who are successful. And so we are really proud of our living learning environment in the residence hall. So if you have an opportunity to let your child live on campus, please do, because your results are, enor are enormous. Also, um, if you don't know where to go, there's always, you've gone everywhere, you've gone to honors, you've gone everywhere that you ought to go, and you still don't have the answers, I'm the one who should have all the answers for you as the Dean of Students. So I always say when everything else is not working, you have a place to go to, to get back on the right track. And that's my office, the Office of the Dean of Students. So we hope that you encourage students to, hey, you know what? I met the Dean of Students and he said, you ought to come to him if you, if you have a challenge. He will help you resolve it. So go to the Dean of Students. Also, we wanna make sure that um, 
that you plan regular time to speak to your sons and daughters. You know, students, as I mentioned earlier, go through all sorts of stressful situations, but for many, this is a newfound freedom. They're going off to college, they're leaving home. You've done so much in the household for them, but now they're getting a chance to be away from you. And all the values that you've instilled in them, we hope that they'll maintain those values, but there's something called values clarification. And, and so oftentimes they challenge some of those values when they come to our campus. And so it is okay if they might challenge something that you might have said that they ought to do or practice and they ask questions about it. Or maybe they think differently now because they're exposed to higher education, they're exposed to different ways of thinking and different ways of doing. And so uh, recognize that your son or daughter might be changing as they go through college. It's a new experience for them but they're still gonna hold on to those values that you've instilled in them and they're gonna hold on to them very dear. Personally, for me as a grown man, I still remember many of the things that my parents told me and I still try to adhere to many of those things. And I'm sure you've done an excellent job and so your sons and daughters would do likewise. Understand also that you may contact your student and keep in regular contact because some of them are going to be in a big old city called New York City and, you know, and they could easily be lost. Uh, they are going to naturally be wanting to associate with students who are just like them, who are on the same path, but it wouldn't hurt to find out who are their friends, where they're going and what are they doing. Uh, we don't want you to harbor over them, but we certainly want you to make sure that you, you stay close and you support them in their education. Your partnership with us equals success for the student. Also, know when to communicate with your son or daughter, and also make sure that when you do, you ask direct questions. Remind them also that, uh, that it's important for them to utilize all the services that we would have spoken about today. You'll hear some more a little bit later. And most importantly, they have to go to class. That is so crucial, that's why they're here. Attendance in class is crucial. Being prepared for class, reading ahead of time, doing homework, uh, doing extra so that they can maintain the A's. Recognizing that an A in high school is so different to an A in college. And so it's a different, the rigor is different. And so helping them to prepare, that's why we have all these resources, all these services available, because we want them to be just as successful as they were in high school to be as successful in college as well. And so that is so important. Connectivity or connect, uh, being connected is so important. Our employers continue to tell us that they want a student who has a holistic approach to, uh, to his or her being. By that, a student who's actively engaged on campus, a student who's doing exceedingly well in classes, a student who is, uh, who is uh, doing uh, 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 practical training and internships and job shadowing opportunities, a student who is leading in clubs and organizations, etc. That's a well-rounded student. That's the student that's going to be impressive in front of a, a, a potential employer, a potential, uh, 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 whether it's in graduate school, etc. Those are the impressive students. So we've sent a whole lot. Imagine we've just graduated over 5,000 impressionable young men and women who've gone into this world, this big wide world to make significant differences. They're bear cats and they're going to make a bear cat difference in the world. And so we're so excited about that. Expect some changes, like I said, in your son and daughter, expect that there's an adjustment and so hold them accountable because we're going to hold them responsible, but we recognize that they're growing and they're developing and they're learning. So we want to make sure that we help them to become independent. Remind them about your expectations, as I said earlier, about family values, and allow them to form meaningful friendships with those who are like them. Those, but also encourage them to uh, uh, you know, work with people who are not like them, meaning diversity is utmost. Employers want individuals who can come into their companies and fit in really well because they understand how to work with individuals from all walks of life whether it's somebody who's international, whether it's somebody who's LGBT, whether it's somebody who is a, a, a you know, person of color, whether it's someone with a disability, uh, whether, whatever it is, employers are expecting to have a diverse workforce and so they expect individuals to come in and fit really well into that diverse workforce. And so that's the kind of preparation that we do here at Baruch College, especially in the honors program. And then of course, Encourage students to get connected to the college. Encourage them to utilize their Gmail, not just made an error, not their Gmail, but rather their Baruch email address. That's a fraudulent slip. That's exactly what we don't want them to do. Their Gmail is a private address or Hotmail or whatever email they use privately. That's for them and that's for their friends, et cetera. 
when they're corresponding with us on the college, they must utilize their Baruch email address. So their Baruch email address. We do not correspond with students, nor do we expect students to correspond with us unless they use the Baruch email address. Uh, how would we know that it's John Doe if he or she doesn't use that specific address given to them? And so it's so important for them to check their G, uh, why am I keep saying Gmail, the uh, Baruch email address on a regular basis because they miss out oftentimes on scholarship opportunities, internship opportunities, important information about the college, and all sorts of fun things that we have available for them. And I know that on this program is going to make sure that they do that because that's what they do. Um, also, we want to make sure that parents stay in contact with us and, and that you get involved in our family program because that's how you get information from us. That's how you keep in contact with us. And how, that's how we're able to share with you all the important things that we need for you to be doing, again, as our partnership with you for the success of your son or daughter. And so, uh, again, we are partners in this together.